All right, thank you very much, Nakundi. And of course, that is a conversation that we want to move forward this afternoon. My guest is already here. James Mulili is a tax director at PKF. James, welcome to KTN. Thank you, Bogo. All right, first yeah. things first. What do you make of this finance bill 2023? Uh, now, this finance bill is uh, one of a kind. Eh? And uh, the reason I'm saying it's one of a kind, it is a demonstration of uh, the urgent need that the government has uh, to raise revenue, tax revenues to be specific. And um, if we draw parallels uh, between the amendments that were there in the last Finance Act 2022, uh, with, the, with the proposals that we are grappling with in the finance bill, yeah. you'll notice that we are looking at proposed amendments almost twice the number mm -hmm. of what was there in the last, uh, in the last budget. And, um, and um, basically the proposals we are seeing is uh, a direct communication from government that they want to collect every single penny that they can. And Bogo, you'll be shocked. Mm -hmm. They want that money here and now. And the reason I'm saying here and now, you'll notice that as we discuss, yeah. a number of those uh, budget proposals, the government intends for the tax to be collected within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can actually see uh, that push sort of speaks to what we've been seeing uh, in, the, in the, the media uh, with regards to government uh, having cash, cash flow constraints because you can actually see there's a push and there's a deliberate intention yeah. to make sure that that tax is collected almost immediately in real time and remitted uh, to, to, to basically to the government. Okay. Yeah. Now, in terms of when you look at our tax pool and, and the people that are paying taxes, from the recently released survey, we have about 3.2 uh, million Kenyans formerly employed. Are we looking at this number shrinking further? Um, good question. And um, I think you're almost touching on uh, some of these proposals that are there especially when it comes to the taxation of employees. Yeah. Uh, whilst the discussion about uh, increasing uh, the, the higher band to 35% is only targeting at uh, sort of high, high, high income earning employees mm -hmm. who are earning more than 500,000 shillings per, per month, uh, you will notice that um, the emphasis still seems to be it's an easy win, it's an easy gain. But then the question is, uh, if you look at the 3.5 million figure that you've mentioned, how many Kenyans actually earn 500,000 and above? Yeah. And you see the question is, it will obviously come with an implication to these high income earning employees. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a reprieve for the lower brackets uh, that haven't been touched. But even to, even to add to that, eh, there are these other proposals that are not necessarily tax proposals, touching on increasing the NHIF rates, mm -hmm. the housing fund, and you see it's talking to, now that affects all employees, regardless of whether you are high income earning or not. And it basically means, yeah. if these proposals sail through, we are looking at lower disposable incomes for these individuals who are under employment and any other individual who is willing to make these contributions. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not really a matter of shrinking, but it's a matter of lower disposable income. Then there's that triple effect. Eh? Mm -hmm. Remember you need the disposable income to buy other items. Yeah. So what does it then speak to? There is that expected ripple effect when these employees or these individuals have lower income, mm -hmm. then you'd automatically expect eh, yeah. that there will be a decrease in the purchasing power. Okay. Decrease in purchasing power has an impact on reduced VAT, reduced excise duty, one way or another. So basically what I'm hearing you say is that this could actually be counterproductive. It could be counterproductive. It mm, will be counterproductive. Okay. Yes. Now, as we speak here, when you look at the taxes, we're almost, it's almost half of one salary. When you look at NS, uh, NHIF 2.75, we look at the NSSF 6%, you look at housing levy 3%, you look at uh, pay, and especially for those earning about 500,000, uh, we're talking about 35%. Is this the normal, uh, when you look at different markets, is this standard procedure, is this the standard taxation rate, or what is the standard taxation rate, and how far are we from it? Um, okay, we are, not, we are not far off, because if you look at our neighbours uh, within the East African region, I think if you go to Uganda, mm -hmm. the highest uh, tax rate on the highest band is 40%. Is, uh, is, uh, 40%. Uh, if you go to the developed countries, for example, 
there are jurisdictions where the tax rate goes even as high as 50%. Yeah. Now, if you comparatively look to all these deductions that a Kenyan employee would get, eh, it almost translates to the same effective rate of tax, whether it's 40, 50%. Mm -hmm. But then you see the question is, in these developed jurisdictions, these deductions actually go towards what they're intended. If you look at their quality of life, even if someone is taxed, taxed at a higher uh, uh, rate of tax in those developed countries, yeah. you'll notice that they have a better quality of life because there are certain aspects that these deductions go towards, mm -hmm. be it insurance, be it medical. But you see, it's not the same environment from a Kenyan tax point of view. Yeah. You'll still be required, even after paying all those levies, there are certain, there's a certain level of service for those amounts that you cannot get. Mm -hmm. So as an individual, you have to go deeper into your pocket and finance uh, some of these uh, expenses. Yeah. Now, when you look at uh, this, uh, this finance bill, there are those who will say that roping in digital content creators, of course, they're, making, uh, they're earning a living from this, uh, uh, from this craft, but then they've not been paying taxes. So there are those who feel that this could actually be one way of, uh, of expanding the tax bracket. But there are those who are saying it is too high. So where do we go? What is the balance? What is the right amount? What is the right percentage if we're going to rope in everyone? Yeah, and, and did you see the question is where then does the buck stop? Mm -hmm. or where, when does the cycle end? Eh? Um, a solution to the challenges that the government is fa facing yeah. in terms of mobilizing revenue. Number one, we always talk of increasing the tax net. Mm -hmm. Now, this is actually one of the ways the government has ex is exploring yeah. to increase the tax net. Now, in all fairness, and uh, I'll touch on this issue that uh, it always seems that the businesses that are paying tax mm -hmm. or that are thriving are the ones that are always subjected to these proposals. I would say in a way, uh, this, is, uh, this is an intention by government to increase uh, the tax revenue. Yeah. It is not to say that digital content creators were exempt from tax. Mm -hmm. I, think that, I think that notion is wrong. Yeah. Uh, because provided you're doing any business in Kenya, and you're earning your income from Kenya, you're supposed to pay taxes in Kenya. Mm -hmm. The only downside is uh, the rate of tax that yeah. is proposed to be, to be, to be implemented. Mm -hmm. And it's a rate of 15% on gross earnings, or okay. not basically what these content creators are getting. Mm -hmm. So in as much as there is a good intention to increase the tax net, the consideration should be re-looking re at uh, this rate. Yeah. Because it's too high on the gross. Remember, these content creators, like any other business, mm -hmm. will incur expenses. Yeah. So isn't there a way to factor in some of these expenses? And, and if you look at generally the taxation regime mm -hmm. in Kenya, we are normally taxed on gains or profits. Yeah. So why, why uh, for this emerging industry, why uh, segregate it and tax it very highly? Mm. And uh, it's actually young people who are doing some of these things. So why don't you encourage them yeah. to grow into bigger businesses? All right, uh, we've been talking about hits and misses. From where you sit, what would have been the best approach as we wind up in terms of widening the tax bracket, but at the same time, not constraining those already who are paying taxes? Actually, my concern is bigger mm -hmm. uh, because of the erratic nature of the tax changes that we grapple with every year. Uh, there is a draft national tax policy that was, uh, that was uh, published and uh, subjected to public participation. What we are seeing as the proposals in this finance bill yeah. actually go against the proposals in the national tax policy. Uh, businesses uh, would expect some level of certainty, some level of gross, uh, sort of grace, a grace period mm. before any radical tax changes can be implemented. And, and you see that the, the problem is this, if you also look at the way the finance bill has been drafted, mm -hmm. there's a bit of misdrafting. Yeah and some issues have been overlooked. And I'll touch, for example, on the issue of uh, applicability of VAT on petroleum products. Mm -hmm. So the proposal is to delete the 8% VAT on fuel. But then, if you look at the way the amendment is being proposed, they've not, yeah. amended, okay. they've not amended the section of the act where petroleum products are still exempt. So it yeah. puts us in a limbo. Okay. Will they be subject to VAT at a higher rate of 16 mm -hmm. or not? So you can actually see, the, in, in a nutshell, yeah. the challenge really is uh, the unpredictability mm -hmm. and maybe more thought uh, okay. with regards to the uh, to expansion of the tax net. 
All right, James, thank you so much for making time for us. And of course, uh, these are conversations that we have to follow up going forward. And we'll be looking forward in terms of having a, a, a broader conversation with you in terms of what does this then mean for the operating environment for businesses. That is how we wrap up this edition of Business Today. My name is Jimmy Mbogo Mbiu, KTN is up next.